Jim Branscombe here for the Cinematic Boy Vlog. It is very early in the morning at LAX. We just got done, well not just got done, last night we uh, did the Sergio Martino in person for Torso and Strange Vice Mrs. Warden. How was it? It was freaking amazing. <laughs> that will be in another vlog, but right now, um, Leslie and I are going on a flight. We're actually flying to Dallas and then she's going to head to Baltimore and then I'm going to head up to Chicago to do another Q&A with Sergio Martino at the Music Box Theater. So, my it's Martino Madness. <laughs> All weekend, extended weekend long here. So, cheers. Cheers. Yes, we need the coffee. <laughs> coffee. So we are currently laid over in Dallas, Texas. I'm actually hanging out with Leslie at her gate that's gonna be getting ready to board in like 10 minutes. And then we'll walk down to my gate and get on my plane. Sad we're going separate ways, but you know, she's got things she's gotta do, I got things I gotta do. It's the great bifurcation. Yes. <laughs> but we did get some nice Dunkin' Donuts coffee, you know, keeping the tradition. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> very disappointed that they didn't have any lip balm. Like, so disappointed. Maybe it was donut flavor. It's just people buying lip balm and it's like, well, it's cheaper than a donut. <laughs> no. I can't imagine anyone doing that. Alright, we'll miss you. Miss you too. <laughs> the Chicago okay you know it was a pretty smooth flight other than once we landed uh, another plane was still at our gate so we had to wait for that plane to leave and then when we were trying to get off the plane that that bridge thing that connects to the door of the airplane that you walk through to get get out of the to your gate out of the gate to the terminal uh, the mechanics were frozen so they had to unfreeze that so we sat on the plane for an extra 20 minutes but other than that um, the homie will will Morris who does music box of horrors Oscar bait came pick me up at the airport we grabbed a, some kind of lunch dinner it's really cool and then came in hotel checked in and then went and had some cocktails with Sergio Martino and his crew and yeah I am tired really really tired it's January Giallo is the craziest month and even when I'm not traveling it just it feels like it's a lot going on so and I'm also dealing with sinus stuff because going from LA to here it just different air pressures different temperatures and I don't know. So I'm very sinusy. But today I'm going to be at the music box and we'll be doing another QA with Sergio. And I'm, you know, need to wake up. So I'm going to go downstairs. They have a cafe down there and grab some coffee. I'm going to go start my day and get ready to do round two with Sergio. The desire to create something slightly unusual, or at least with an unusual mechanics to it. And in particular, it was inspired by an American movie. E un film americano si chiama Terrore Cieco, remember? I remember. E quindi scrissi questa storia e casualmente un produttore che era Cervi, produttore giovane produttore italiano, lo presentò a Carlo Ponti. Io stavo girando un film in, a Padova e mi, e mi telefonarono che volevano a, mandare avanti questo progetto. And the name of the movie was Blind Terror. So initially I conceived this movie and then things kind of all came together. There was the producer, Carlo Ponti, that came about and said, well, we now have the possibility of making it happen. And I was working on another movie, but then it all came together very quickly. La storia in, in, in realtà in titolo originale è qua cinque ragazze sole, five, five women alone. 
e, e ovviamente con lo svolgimento della sceneggiatura credo che, la, che soprattutto il valore di quel film è per la qualità, c'è cioè la quantità di, di sequenze quasi tutte in silenzio, non c'è che si parla perché c'è una meccanica che chi non ha visto ancora il film è meglio che non la scopro e che ovviamente è determinata dalla necessità di non poter parlare. So, the movie is quite interesting in its way of having been produced because uh, towards the end of the movie there is a really long sequence which I'm not going to spoil, but it's quiet, it's silent sequence. So, there are some elements that are particularly interesting in this production. E quindi di conseguenza realizzare questo film è l'idea di Carlo Ponti di renderlo più internazionale ambientandolo a Perugia dove c'è un'università internazionale, dove ci sono molti, anche moltissimi ragazzi americani. E anche recentemente, 4-5 anni fa, c'è stato un delitto in quella città e, e ovviamente spesso e volentieri si è fatto riferimento al mio film perché sembrava quasi fosse la stessa dinamica, però re, reale, di, di, un, di, un, di un omicidio in quella città. I giornali ne parlarono anche in questo senso. So Carlo Ponti's idea was then made into a movie which has an element of surprise in the sense that it's set in a city in Italy called Perugia and that's an international city. A lot of university students go there and it was just, you know, a coincidence that years later, after the movie had come out, years later an actual murder happened in the city, a worldwide known murder, murder characters, and many newspapers created that association. It was pure chance, but the fact that it had some kind of resurgence due to that episode, that element, um, it definitely made it international in a way. Quindi di, con di conseguenza il film fu realizzato anche con attori, diciamo, non solo italiani, e soprattutto questa ambientazione diciamo eh, internazionale ha dato forse la possibilità di essere amato anche all'estero vedendo questa sala piena mi sembra che sia anche una conferma di tutto questo and so the fact that there was an international element to it and the fact that the cast was not only italian there were people from abroad as well that created some international interest and i can tell by the fact that this room is full nowadays um, that it was a success in its way <laughs> Next, okay. <laughs> you control it. You're directing this, so I, I go by you. What did this, you worked on the script with one of your frequent collaborators, Ernesto Gastaldi. Could you talk about what the writing process was with him on this movie? Sì, sicuramente. Io ho avuto sempre un rapporto particolare con Ernesto. Io sulla traccia di una mia storia, quindi che era personale, e ovviamente, ovviamente non. In realtà la, la prima storia era molto più circoscritta ai personaggi, però lo, avendola ampliata con quelle altre morti che ci sono nel, 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 nella storia, si sono create delle, 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 delle storie parallele che hanno dato forse anche più sapore al film e anche e soprattutto la difficoltà di, 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 di individuare chi era il vero assassino. I don't want to say it now, but I don't have to see it. So obviously there is personal history between myself and Ernesto, which created that collaboration, but also the fact that we wanted to add some elements to the movie, which again, I'm not going to spoil for you guys, because some of you have not seen it. Um, but um, initially it's not just, you know, one murder that happens. There's a few elements that come together, and the fact that you don't know who it is until the very end is definitely a pivotal element in our collaboration. All right, we're, I'm now leaving Chicago after doing this two days of Sergio Martino. This is Will Morris. Hello, Chanel. friends. Will, how did last night go? It was fucking incredible. Uh, Chicago did Chicago's favorite thing where we get a walk up of like 250 people in the last 10 minutes. So well over 500 folks. It was insane. Sergio was amazing. Q&A was great. People lost their shit. Yeah, and I think a good amount of the crowd had not seen the movie last night. Yeah, it seemed like it was like half and half, which was perfect. And the key scene, really. <laughs> oh, that key scene is really slayed. <laughs> it, it, 
it, it, I had to change the Q and A because most people hadn't seen it. It's like, well, you can't talk about any of the good shit. <laughs> yes. The Q and A was great. Uh, Sergio did tell a story <laughs> about like towards the end about like you know being in Hawaii and watching families wait for their kids to come back from the war in Vietnam, and I was like, I can't end on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got very somber, but it was great because everyone in the room was locked in to Sergio. So yeah, that, so it worked. So they got to hear some war stories before it's over. So. No, but it, it was great. Like he did, we did. I did two different Q and As. I mean, it was both torso, but talk about different stuff. And afterwards, he's like, "I decided to be more serious this one, less jokes." <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, but Will is being kind. He's taking me, picked me up from the airport, taking me to the airport. Oh, and, I'm gonna, yeah. and I'm gonna miss him. Will's uh, one of my favorite people. Me too. Always. I wish we didn't live a million miles away. Well, I talked to Ryan at Music Box. Like, let's do something again in the summer. So beautiful. But we'll figure it out. But we'll be back soon, friends. bouncy camera here but I am in the economy parking lot which I paid five dollars more to be here instead of the budget one which has been a good investment because I was one of two people on the bus everyone else paid for budget and they're waiting on a bus that comes every like 30 40 minutes this bus picked me up in like less than five so smart investment but yeah uh, that's gonna wrap up this vlog it was an incredible couple days in Chicago, you know, doing a Q&A with Serge Martino and, you know, getting to hang out, talk to him. Obviously, get to hang out with my, the homie Will and Ryan from the Music Box. Shout out to Stephanie Sachs, who helped put this together. Alice and Gabriella, who were on Team Martino. She was an interpreter. He was doing videography and taking photos and stuff. So, great weekend, along with the LA show. So, I don't know. Gonna be hard to top this January Jail. Until next time, see you in the void.